I saw a statistic recently that said two thirds of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck and 24% have zero dollars in their savings. That sounds like it kind of sucks though, right? Over the long run, of course it does. Can we just start printing tendies soon? Well, uh, we, uh, we have a strong economy. Uh, so are you saying buy Bitcoin? No, no, that's not what we say at all, no. So we could YOLO all our money into pet rock slash Spider-Man NFTs again, right? You could, or you could just halt the progress. Will the price of anything ever come down? But the overall price level doesn't come down. So today I have a very special guest who's gonna help me explain the economy. And that special guest is Chairman of the Federal Reserve, Chairman Jerome Powell. Mr. Powell, thank you so much for coming on my YouTube channel. Thank you for having me, Andre. I've been practicing my card tricks just for this occasion. Actually, speaking of magic tricks, I've been practicing one I wanted to show you, which is printing money. It's, you kind of taught everyone this one, but looks like a deck of cards, but actually I just printed every one of them into uh, stacks of money. That's a cool trick, Andre. Make sure people hit the like button, because that's amazing. If the US economy was a magic trick, which one would you say it would be and why? I'd say it's like pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Just when you think you figured it out, it surprises you. There's a lot of preparation and it takes a lot of misdirection to keep things going smoothly. Well, speaking of misdirection, what do you think about Bitcoin? Is it more magic or tragic? Well, Andre, as, as the Federal Reserve Chairman, it's a bit of both. It's magic for those who understand its risks and can afford them, but it can be tragic for those who think it's a quick path to wealth without doing their homework. I actually heard a rumor recently that the Fed is gonna try a new strategy for controlling inflation. Maybe the Fed coin or the digital dollar making that money disappear. Can you share any more details about that? I can't reveal any secrets. I'll just say we're, we're always exploring new and innovative approaches, but making money disappear might be a little too innovative for our taste. We prefer the classic methods, interest rates and quantitative easing. If you could theoretically perform any magic trick to the economy right now, which one would it be? I think I'd go with making the national debt disappear. Would you say that you're concerned about the national debt right now? In the long run, the U.S. is on an unsustainable fiscal path. The U.S. federal government's on an unsustainable fiscal path. And that just means that the debt is growing faster than the economy. I have a sense that, that worries you very much. Over the long run, of course it does. You know, we're effectively, we're borrowing from future generations. It's time for us to get back to putting a priority on fiscal sustainability. And, and sooner is better than later. Thank you for being here, Mr. Chairman. Pleasure is mine, Andre. Would you be willing to do the video intro for the videos that I do? No, I'm good. Okay, no, no worries, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Anyway, let's get into the video. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well, come for the finance, and stay for the craziest collab you've never seen in theaters absolutely nowhere. So let's continue my hypothetical interview with Jerome Powell in case you missed the real one from 60 Minutes. Now, I don't think Jerome Powell actually watches my YouTube videos, but if he does, I would say so far he's done a pretty good job with the economy considering everything he's had to work with. Now, I wanted to ask him questions like a normal person would who's not an economist about the economy and I wanted to structure his answers in a way that made sense for everyone so we can understand what's actually going on. So let's get back to the interview and see what happens. Mr. Chairman, do you think that my Bitcoin is kind of like inflation, just gone forever with the bankruptcies? I wouldn't go quite so far as that. Uh, what I can say is that inflation has come down really over the past year and fairly sharply over the past six months. We're making good progress. The job is not done and we're, we're very much committed to making sure that we fully restore price stability for the benefit of the public. So if inflation's basically gone, when can we start to lower interest rates? Can we just start printing tendies soon? Well, uh, we, uh, we have a strong economy. Uh, growth is going on at a, at, a, at a solid pace. The labor market is strong, 3.7% unemployment. With the economy strong like that, we, we feel like we can approach the question of when to begin to uh, reduce interest rates carefully. And we, you know, we wanna see more evidence that inflation is moving sustainably down to 2%. We have some confidence in that, our confidence is rising. We just want some more confidence before we take that very important step of, step of beginning to to cut interest rates. I saw a statistic recently that said two thirds of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck and 24% have zero dollars in their savings. Sounds about right. Is there a question in there? 
No, I guess not. Everything's perfectly normal. Mr. Chairman, I've never been able to explain to people why inflation has to go up by 2% every year. Like, why do prices have to grow at 2% to be considered the perfect number? Interest rates will always include uh, an estimate of future inflation. If that estimate is 2%, that means you'll have 2% more that you can cut in your in interest rates. The central bank will have more ammunition more power to fight a downturn if rates are a little bit higher. So are you saying buy Bitcoin? No, no, that's not what we say at all, no. Um, we're committed to returning inflation to 2% over time. Uh, I've said that we, we wouldn't wait to get to 2% to, to cut rates. So the last time the Federal Reserve got together, they didn't lower interest rates, and that upset a lot of people on Wall Street bets because you're prioritizing price stability. Can you explain why? I can't overstate how important it is to restore price stability, by which I mean inflation is low and predictable and people don't have to think about it in their daily lives. That's where we were for 20 years. We want to get back to that. So we could YOLO all our money into pet rock slash Spider-Man NFTs again, right? You could, or you could just halt the progress. I, I think more likely uh, if you move too soon, you'd see inflation settling out somewhere well above our 2% target. So I guess your job is to figure out when to lower interest rates so inflation doesn't come back because eventually you'll have to let people YOLO money again, otherwise they'll just be really mad at you. Right, and we have to, we have to balance those two risks. There, there is no you know, easy, simple, obvious path. Do you think the Fed was a little late on stopping people from putting their money into crazy investments that made no sense? So in hindsight, it would have been better to, to to have tightened policy earlier. We thought that the economy was so dynamic that it would fix itself fairly quickly. And we thought that inflation would go away fairly quickly without an intervention by us. And so in the fourth quarter of 21, it became clear that inflation was not transitory in the sense that I mentioned. And we pivoted and started tightening. And as I, as I said, it's, it's, it's essential that we did that. It was critical that we did that. And that's part of the story why inflation is coming down now. That's amazing. When are you dropping the tutorial for that shuffle? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was thinking of doing a tutorial on how to busk on the Las Vegas Strip, actually. I like Vegas. I got seats to the Super Bowl, but I paid 10K to be in the nosebleeds. Kind of reminds me of that one Harry Potter quote. If it rains, you'll be the first to know. Stupid inflation, am I right? Mr. Powell, when do you think people will be able to YOLO their money again? When will you start to lower interest rates? Is it in March? I think it's not likely that this committee will reach that level of confidence in time for the March meeting, which is in seven weeks. Okay, so definitely this year though, right? Do you think everyone on the Federal Reserve Board will agree with that? Almost all, almost all of the uh, 19 participants who sit around this table uh, believe that it will be appropriate in their most likely case for us to cut the, the federal funds rate this year. But then you'll only lower them by 0.25%, which isn't a lot. What are you looking for specifically? We just want to see more good data along those lines. It doesn't need to be better than what we've seen or even as good. It just needs to be good. And so we do expect to see that. Were you at all surprised when Senator Warren criticized you about the economy? And I hope you'll reconsider that as you drive this, before you drive this economy off a cliff. But it didn't drive off a cliff. Mrs. Warren isn't subscribed to your channel, obviously. Appreciate that. Please subscribe because this took me way too long to make. If she was wrong about it, what did she get wrong, and what did the average person misunderstand about what was going on? Can you give me an example? There was a semiconductor shortage because uh, so many people were buying goods that, that involved a lot of semiconductors. So while demand for cars was spiking because people didn't want to ride public transportation, for example, and they're moving to the suburbs, while that's happening, you can't get semiconductors, you can't make cars. So there's a shortage. So what happened is inflation just spiked. And, but as, as the semiconductor supply came back, prices, the inflation has moderated a great deal. So it really, these unique features of the pandemic did reverse in a way that brought inflation down. That makes a lot of sense. The supply chain was just a unique problem that sort of fixed itself. Mr. Chairman, do you think that prices will ever go back to the way they were? So the prices of some things will decline, others will go up, but we don't expect to see a decline in the overall price level. Um, that doesn't tend to happen in economies except in very negative circumstances. If you think about the, the basic necessities, things like you know bread and milk and eggs, prices are substantially higher than they were before the pandemic. And so that's, we think that's a big reason why people are, have been relatively dissatisfied with what is otherwise a, a pretty good economy. So will the price of anything ever come down? Things that are affected by 
commodity prices, like for example, gasoline prices have come way down. Some food prices that, that incorporate the price of commodities, grains and things like that, those can come down. But the overall price level doesn't come down. So I guess someday our cereal will be cheaper, so that's good to know. But what about the banks? Because a lot of them invested our deposit money into commercial real estate loans, and those aren't doing so good. What's the likelihood that those banks who took on those risks will fail? I don't think, I don't think that's likely. We looked at the larger banks' balance sheets, and it appears to be a manageable problem. There's some smaller and regional banks that have concentrated exposures in these areas that are challenged, and you know we're working with them. What about 2008 2.0? Might happen, won't happen. I, I, don't, I don't think there's much risk of a repeat of 2008. Certainly there will be some banks that have to be closed or, or merged out of, out of existence because of this. That'll be smaller banks, I suspect, for the most part. But Signature Bank was the 16th biggest bank in the world, and it still failed. And doesn't that mean the Fed isn't perfect because they missed that one? So, yes, we, uh, we did. And we forthrightly uh, saw that we needed to do better. So we've spent a lot of time working on ways to make supervision more effective and also to, to, to adapt regulation to a more to a modern context in which a bank run can happen so much faster than it could have even 20 years ago. So 20 years from now, I read that the national debt will go from 34 trillion that it's at right now to over 130 trillion. That's about a million dollars per household. That sounds really scary. What's the consequence of all that borrowing? In the long run, the U.S. is on an unsustainable fiscal path. The U.S. federal government's on an unsustainable fiscal path. And that just means that the debt is growing faster than the economy. That sounds like it kind of sucks though, right? Over the long run, of course it does. You know, we're effectively, we're borrowing from future generations. It's time for us to get back to putting a priority on fiscal sustainability. And, and sooner is better than later. If it came down to just two, Biden or Trump, who do you think you'll vote for? We do not consider politics in our decisions. We never do and, and we never will. It's not easy to get the economics of this right in the first place. These are complicated, you know, risk balancing decisions. If we, if we tried to incorporate a whole nother set of factors in politics into those decisions, it could only lead to, bit, to worse economic outcomes. So we simply don't do that, and we're not going to do it. We haven't done it in the past, and we're not going to do it now. What would you say is the number one most important thing for you? Integrity is priceless. And at the end, that's all you have. And we, we, we plan on keeping ours. Thank you for coming on to my channel. It's been real, bro. So 90% of this interview was not modified, and the other 10% was AI which is gonna be the end of us. I hope you had a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to grab your free stocks. The links are down below and then go track them automatically with the spreadsheet link down below in my Patreon. Love you, thank you so much for watching this video. I'd love to see you back here on Monday and Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. I'll see you soon.